Our new quilt binder creates a beautiful binding in no time flat, which is a double thickness like we're used to. It works right out of the box with the performance icon, the creative icon, and the creative icon too. Then it will work with the, the J class of sewing machines when used with needle plate 4129643. And here are the J class of sewing and embroidery machines that the new quilt binder will be compatible with, with the addition of that needle plate mentioned previously. The 5 8 inch quilt binder comes with the binder itself, of course, platform that screws into your plate here in order to stabilize the binder. And, uh, your screws, washers, and a special foot, which is the 5 8 inch quilt binder foot for IDT system. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get this screwed into the stitch plate and then the binder attachment screwed into this platform. The platform has a little metal peg on the bottom side that goes into a hole on your needle plate. And this screws in without a washer. Then the binder will sit right over the two screw holes here. And these two screws will be placed in with washers. So if you don't tighten these down at first, you can move this side to side in order to get it where you want it to be. And it's probably easier to put the foot on before you put the binder on, but sometimes I forget. And you do want to engage your IDT. So now we're set up here. I have previously created some, cut some binding fabric to make the binding. And <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to Cut it three inches wide, fold it in half and press it, and then cut a, a sharp point on the end because that helps you to just push it through the binder more readily, more easily. And then the first thing you do is you're going to wind it through this curly Q end that helps to hold it in place. Then you're going to stick the pointy fabric into the binder and you want the raw edge of the binding uh, up and then if you have something that's sharp like a stylus or as I have a seam ripper that will pull it through <clears throat> then looking closely at your binder just so you know how this works there are these two right angle pieces of metal those two pieces of metal when you pull the binding fabric through and pull it at a, a right angle, what happens is they create that binding shape so that you end up with a piece of fabric that kind of looks like a taco. So <clears throat> what we want optimally is when we pull it back, we want the binding fabric to be at a right angle to the binder. And when you have uh, you can test it by putting the foot down just to see how that looks to you. That looks pretty good. So then what I would do is tighten this up once I'm happy with my placement. When we go to sew uh, the binding on, we are going to place the quilt sandwich in between these two layers of fabric. And the shape is that sideways taco shape and the quilt sandwich becomes like the beans in the taco, fitting right in there. Now I'm gonna take my quilt sandwich and I'm gonna start midway along one side. And I want to um, stick it in between the layers of the binding fabric. So I kind of hold on to the tail and wiggle it in there and then I check to make sure that I've got this right angle of the fabric 
And I'm also going to see where my needle is. I'm going to move it to the left a little bit, move it closer towards the inner edge of my binding. And uh, then I will begin to sew down. Now, before I start sewing, I want to make sure that I have enough of a tail here on the end so that when I go all the way around, I will have an easy time joining the beginning and the end. So now I have my needle moved over and my fabric at that right angle. I'm going to start sewing. And as I'm sewing, I'm just eyeballing periodically to make sure that this is the beans are in the taco and that this uh, tail of the binding fabric is not getting turned around on itself. And go all the way to the edge of the quilt sandwich and then I'm going going to um, fix the end now at this point hopefully you realize that as we were sewing along you could do the whole side of a quilt very quickly and I'll show you what the um, actual binding looks like here. So here's one side, then the other side looks pretty nice, right? So now we're at the end where we need to do our miter. To do the miter, we actually need to bring the needle and the foot up and pull it out and find some scissors to clip the little thread. Then in the instructions, what they mention is that when you make the miter, that you want to put a pin here on the front and a pin on the back and then have that hold the miter in place until you get the needle in place and then you pull the pins out. I find that a little awkward and instead <clears throat> what I use is Elmer's school glue. Elmer's school, school glue is just starch so it washes out um, the first time you wash the item. So I like to use it because it provides just enough tackiness to hold the miter in place while I'm repositioning it. So what I do is wherever there's gonna be fabric folded or placed on top of another piece of fabric, I put a little bit of glue. Now on this black binding, you're gonna see it quite readily, less so on other fabrics. So I do that on the front and then I do the same thing on the back. Then what we need to do is we need to pull a little bit in there. And oh, I didn't get this one thread. Well, some people will leave those tails and use that to tack down the miter. Um, I'd rather do that with a needle and thread later. So um, what I do now is I put my thumb underneath on the inside of the taco shape and then with my finger I push to form the triangle that will form the miter. So I kind of mash that down. So now I've got my miter here. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to make that triangular shape on the back side as well. So there's our miter on the back side. And we'll turn this back this way. Make sure we have everything positioned optimally, which we do. Then we're going to need to tighten this up a little bit. We're going to need to get the um, that taco shape back, the bias tape shape back. So what you do is you just kind of move it back and forth, sort of in a flossing motion. And these metal right angled um, pieces here will form that shape again. So then what you want to do is position it so that you have 
the needle going down into the miter where you want it to be and then put your needle down and then give the binding a tug to make sure that you've got it in position. This looks like it's a little bit, it has drifted a little bit. There we go. Then you're going to start out slowly. looks like. I'm going to trim off my um, I'm going to trim off my threads and then show you what this looks like. So we have this side and that glue will wash right off and then the back side it's a little thread. Let's cut that and then there is the back side. Back side front side. And then I would continue all the way around, leaving a gaff of about this big at the beginning so that I can then join the binding pieces together the way that I typically do. And then sew that, take this out of the binder and just sew that little bit down, which I'll show you in a minute. Now I've taken it out of the quilt binder and I actually press this under because the top part of the binding is turned under because it has that raw edge. And then I also press the back side just because I won't see what's happening on the back side when I'm sewing because I'm going to put this back underneath my 0A foot and then just stitch along here to close off that 5 inch gap. So now I'm just going to close off that gap. So I'm just stitching this down so we close off the gap. 